Right, we're out here today on a farm that we're just going to call Spot X. Uh, they're, ha they're having a bit of a pest bird problem. If you drive around here, you just realize how big the problem is. They've got, uh, they keep horses here and there's uh, rock pigeons, geese and guinea fowl that are eating pretty much all day from the horse feed. In small numbers, it's not an issue, but you know, add up a couple hundred birds and you know, you're going to lose a lot of money. So we've been called in here today to help uh, sort out the problem a little bit. We're going to lower uh, the numbers of a few of these uh, birds. And of course, we're not going to let them go to waste. These are all very tasty animals. So uh, pigeon pies, a nice roast goose and uh, guinea fowl in a pot. It's always good. The primary problem on the farm were the geese. So the original plan was to set out some decoys in an attempt to draw the geese in close enough to be able to take a shot with the air rifle. I also took the opportunity to set out a few rock pigeon decoys. But after assessing the situation, however, we changed plans just a little bit. Well, the original idea was to set up a hide here, uh, maybe about 25 to 50 meters away from the decoys. But I have a feeling if we sit here, we're gonna, we could be here for hours and not see a thing. Uh, these geese could land pretty much anywhere on the farm. So we're going to leave the decoys out here, uh, get out on foot and take a walk around some of the open fields over the hill towards the ocean. We're going to hopefully see some stuff there. If we don't, we'll return here. And I'm sure by that time something will have landed. Uh, I don't know how anything can resist these, uh, these decoys here. They look so realistic. So uh, keeping our fingers crossed. I had huge success shooting geese and pigeons around the feeding troughs as we walked around and you can check out the videos for those hunts by clicking the links at the bottom of the screen but upon returning to the field where the decoys had been set out we were surprised to find that a guinea fowl had decided to make himself comfortable right amongst the pigeon decoys. You didn't even take a step. That was about 25 meters out. Very, very happy with that shot. Let's go get him. Well, unfortunately, no geese came in today, but we managed to get this guinea fowl now, uh, which proves that the decoys work. Uh, we walked past here and we just saw this uh, this guy sitting here right amongst the rock pigeons, and he, he saw us, but uh, he didn't even care that we were there. He obviously found safety in the fact that there were other animals around him. He was just walking casually amongst the rock pigeons like not a care in the world um, and he had his head behind his body so I thought I'd just go for a heart shot. I, I was close enough to uh, to take the heart shot and pull the trigger and he went straight down so I'm definitely very very happy. Um, take a look at this guy's head. It's, it's very interesting. This, these are called uh, helmeted guinea fowls. They have a, like a almost a, it looks like a little crest but it's actually hard almost like bone. Um, they've got a characteristic blue head and uh, these two little red things on the side, flaps of skin, which make it kind of look like a turkey. Uh, very, very interesting animal. Well, that was one bird down, but I still had plenty of work to do. About a month later, I bought myself the slow motion scope cam setup and returned to the farm to carry on where I'd left off. I spot this guy hopping through the long grass quite a long way off and I prepare for the shot. He's completely dead. Uh, I'd be interested to see where I hit him. Oh, there you go. See his neck here. There's a huge cavity. Come, come check here. That is crazy. I hit him right there in the neck. It's a big hole. So that's that's a really good shot. Would have gone right through all his uh, his windpipe and his spine. Straight out the other side, and he he would definitely not have made it far. So that's great. The guinea fowl was surprisingly absent for the rest of the day, so we decided to call it quits and head back the next morning. This spot is only about 15 minutes from my house, so it's quite easy to just hop in the car and drive out whenever the weather looks good. It's great to be able to come here it's just down the road and just shoot the whole day and get some awesome animals and some food for the pot. Um, it's something that most people don't get, you know. To have a spot so close to your house is almost unheard of, especially living in the city like I do. So it's a real treat to come out here. It's a great escape from the, the busyness of life. It's not long before we spot a bird again and it's quite a distance away. This is by far the best shot I've ever taken on a guinea fowl and I'll analyze it quite a bit in the slow motion replay but just watch how this one plays out.
The shot hits him right in the clockwork, and you can see the smile on my face here. I load up, hoping to get a shot on the second bird, but he is a really long way off now, and I'm not going to risk the shot. Yeah. That one's out. How's that, eh? Now, it's quite difficult to explain what went through my mind here because I think in the excitement of the moment, my instincts just kicked in. The first thing I needed to do was to estimate a range. Now, he was 55 meters away when I first saw him, but as he ran, he was getting further from me. The last thing I wanted to do was to hit him low, so I held for a 70 meter shot, knowing that he wouldn't be further than that. By doing this, I eliminated the possibility of a low shot. I did not want to injure this bird. The next thing I had to do was to figure out how far in front of the bird to aim. Remember he's moving so I had to time the shot perfectly and this is the part that I can't really explain because I didn't think, I just did. It was all very subconscious. You can only do this with experience because you have to know the flight time of that pellet at different ranges and I had hunted with a 900 feet per second rifle enough times to know more or less how long it would take for that pellet to reach him. The next thing I did was to pick a mark, in this case this flower over here knowing that the bird would be passing by it at some point. This all happens very quickly, but I hold the crosshairs on the flower, knowing that the bird should be in the perfect position by the time the pellet reaches him, and I let that lead fly. The pellet hits about an inch further back than I would have liked it to hit, but the height is perfect and he goes down on the spot. These birds are known to be incredibly difficult to kill. They've been called the Sherman tanks of the bird kingdom, but with that pellet placed as well as it was, he didn't stand a chance. That was awesome. This is the first day I'm hunting with this gun, ever. And the first day I'm, I'm hunting with a scope cam. So I always knew it was going to be difficult, resting the gun with one hand. It's not easy. So I'm, I'm extremely happy. Uh, I'll give this gun five stars. <laughs> Excellent. What makes this bird extremely difficult to shoot is the fact that they are, are really big in the body. Which means that if you try to go for a, a hot shot or a spine shot, you have the risk of um, just messing it up and injuring the animal, which is not what you want. So trying to aim for the head is a possibility, but they've got these tiny little heads. It's not like the goose's head. They've got tiny heads and uh, it's just such a small kill zone. You can't really go for that unless you're really close, like within 20 to 30 meters. Um, so I took a bit of a risk here going for the spine shot, but it, it paid off. Um, I, I aimed really high so that if I did kind of mess up my calculations, the shot would have passed straight over him. Um, I knew I wasn't any further than 65 to 70 meters, so um, I wasn't taking a risk with the, the, um, hitting the breastbone. So there's a lot of meat on this guy. Uh, I'm going to take him home and cook him, uh, as well as the pigeon. So it's great. Getting two, two animals in, in one sequence is awesome. Man, I'm stoked. And that is a wrap on the guinea fowl hunt. But no doubt, I'll be back again at some point, because there are still hundreds running around on this farm. There are plenty more hunting episodes just waiting on my hard drive to be uploaded. So subscribe to Air Arms Hunting South Africa to stay notified and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.